Good evening and a warm welcome to all of you in today's Calcutta Business School's Center of Excellence arranged webinar on leveraging CSR to achieve sustainable development goals. We have three great panelists today and I will be introducing them shortly. I warmly welcome our core committee members Mr. Shorab Ghosh, Advisor, Shikshayatan Foundation, our Secretary General, Mrs. Brototi Bhattacharya, Principal, Dr. Shuman Kumar Don, and all professors, students, and participants present today. Before we start, let me show you a short video about Calcutta Business School and its connection with Shikshayatan Foundation, the EPEX body of Calcutta Business School, which is celebrating 100 years of legacy in educational excellence. May we have the video, please, Mr. Sunil Ray? If excelling is your essence, then you are welcome to Calcutta Business School. Center of excellence, centered on excellence. Audio on. Thank you. May I now request our Secretary General, Mrs. Brotati Bhattacharya, to set the tone of the webinar by saying a few words. Uh, thank you, Ms. Ghosh. Uh, a very good evening to everyone present here. We welcome you for this webinar session. Our very esteemed speakers for the day today and I welcome you, Swamiji, Swami Yajna Dharananda, CSR Unit, our Commission, Belurmot, Dr. Rahul Varma, Director, Shrey Foundation, Dr. TV Murli Balaban, I hope I'm getting the name correct, Direct, Director of Marian International Institute of Management, Kerala, and our moderator, Dr. Shubindu Mojumdar, Associate Professor, and of course, our core committee member, Mr. Shorab Ghosh, our principal, Dr. Do, and all the faculty members and, and our dear students and everyone who's listening. Well, as you, uh, you know, many of you have been attending these webinars for quite some time. And those who are new today, let me tell you that this is one strategy that we have adopted to make teaching learning uh, you know, on a different platform altogether. It's not that it, it need not be always in a classroom, but it can be made in a very different way. So we are picking up topics where, which we are discussing. We are having speakers from everywhere else, you know, and uh, we are listening to all these speakers and their views. Well, today's uh, topic, leveraging CSR uh, to achieve sustainable development goals. Now, uh, this is uh, something, you know, which I think our students are all waiting to hear that how, you know, CSR also can be one career option. And that is what, you know, we would like to hear from all the speakers, because people feel that, okay, you know, a corporate sector, and, you know, it has a department, and the department is looking after the CSR uh, requirement. And, you know, so, uh, you know, people are very curious. I have got um, phone calls that how CSR will be a career option. And I think, you know, you can help us to uh, make the students understand that, you know, yes, today CSR itself is an important area. And if we need to have a sustainable development for our uh, country, locally, nationally, we need to have these CSR projects. Thank you. I will not take up your time. One, uh, welcome once again. And over to you, Ms. Ghosh, for the next proceeding. Thank you, Madam. Let us now proceed to the webinar. And let me have the privilege of introducing our panelists today. We have Shami Jogodharanando. Shamiji's of Belur Mott are never keen to discuss about their past or their achievements. And hence, I'm not permitted to talk much about his background. All I can say is that he's a monk at Ramakrishna Mission. At present, he's looking after all the CSR projects and he has a lot of projects under him. 
and his station at Belur Mot. We have Dr. Rahul Verma. Dr. Rahul Verma is a multifaceted corporate executive, philanthropist, motivational speaker, a poet, a spiritual advisor. He has a rich and varied experience of working in the corporate and nonprofit social service sectors for over 33 years and have achieved several milestones. He believes in a sustainable society, believes in Indian ethos in management and business. He has held strategic senior positions with large reputed companies in India as director and president. Currently, he is the president of Shrey Foundation and is actively involved in social and welfare activities carried out by Shrey. Welcome to the webinar, sir. We also have Dr. T. V. Murali Vallabhan. He has an illustrious career, had been director of several public sector enterprises under government of India. He was the principal of NSS College, Vazur, Kerala. Has presented over 250 papers in national and international conferences, including the World Parliament of Religion, where he spoke on spiritual dimensions of CSR in 21st century. Incidentally, it was the same parliament where Shami Vivekanando also spoke. At present, he is the director of Marian International Institute of Management in Kuttikanam, Kerala. Welcome to the webinar, sir. Our moderator for the webinar is Dr. Shubhendu Majumdar, Associate Professor at Calcutta Business School. His area of teaching is behavioral science and strategic HR. I now hand over the webinar to Dr. Mojundar to take it forward. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Ms. Ghosh. Uh, already warm welcome given to all our panelists. <coughs> I think uh, our participants will enjoy this exciting evening from the speech. Three uh, panelists already there from the different perspectives, from the social background, from industry, from academia. And uh, Dr. Murali Vallavan, I know that he was in uh, public sector enterprises from where we can understand that how the public sector units, they are doing what are the government is changing the different policies because this CSR, it is a age old concept. Actually 1950s onward, basically the post uh, uh, second world war onward, the CSR concept introduced. And in our existence, this concept came into our uh, academic era from the perspectives of the Carroll's model. So Carol first identified in a three-dimensional conceptual model of corporate performance uh, from the University of Georgia. From where he specifically told about the three dimensions. One is the social responsibility comes under the ethical, legal, economic, and philanthropic responsibilities. So we have identified our panelists from keeping in mind that three dimensional areas Another is social responsiveness and then social responsibilities. So we will try to discuss in an interactive session with the responsibilities, issues, social issues and responsiveness. So we will go to a, each and individual, all the panelists one by one. Uh, I will start with uh, Swami Jogodhar Anandaji. Uh, I know Jogodhar Anandaji from the past few years. He's a very popular speaker. I know that yesterday he uh, delivered a speech in IIT Kanpur, uh, basically in the value education and life and, life and teachings of Swami Vivekananda. So it was his special area topic. And now he is looking after the CSR projects under the uh, headquarter of the mission. So Swamiji, to you, my question, basically we'll start our discussion. And uh, with this philosophy, that as Vivekananda started a new philosophy of work for the modern world, that all work is done according to the philosophy of work. All work is sacred, work as worship, service to man is service to God. So focus on service to the poor and the undertrodden and work is a spiritual discipline. So with this motto, he started in 1897, 1st May in Kolkata, the twin organizations under one 
monogram with the motto Atmano Moksha Tang Jagad Hitayacha. Basically, for one's own salvation and for the welfare of the world, as it was formulated by Swami Vivekananda. And it is his philosophy and the way your mission is working. So, my question is uh, basically to you that how you are getting uh, from the CSR projects, how it is now conducting through all over India at the national level, in the basically in the rural sector, downtrodden, underprivileged different areas, how people are getting benefited and the, how the philosophy of Shami Vivekananda is manifested in 2021. Your question starts, Shami Jogodharanandaji, please. Thank you, Dr. Mazumdar. And uh, before I go in details, uh, uh, I hope I'm audible to all. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So uh, on my behalf and on the behalf of uh, whole of Ramakrishna Mark and Ramakrishna Mission, I extend uh, my uh, hearty greetings to all the people who are participating in this webinar and especially to the personnel related with Calcutta Business School. Uh, I'm very much delighted that I got this opportunity to put forth Swami Vivekananda's idea in this modern context. Now, just as we heard from Dr. Mazum there, that uh, on the basis of uh, Carol's uh, model, perhaps in 1950, this CSR concept came into existence. And in India, especially, we can see that uh, though CSR in some form it was present, but uh, after 2014, as far as I know, uh, the rules have been made little uh, more explicit. And corporates are, uh, uh, they have to participate in CSR activities in a very precise way. So that way CSR has become very popular. But now if we go into history, I would like to take you to the historical aspect. Uh, in our country, as far as helping people is concerned, it has been going for millennia. This was a concept in our country and to a large extent, even now it is so that as long as a human being has some means of existence, he is always ready to help others. What actually CSR means, what actually CSR is supposed to do, the government's aim is to reach to people who are usually neglected. Uh, when we talk of development, we talk of progress, usually we take into consideration those people who have all the means available to them, but there's a huge population in India who don't have even means to get two square meals. So government tried to uh, keep uh, those people into consideration and through corporates, they made it compulsory that some form of help should reach to people at grass level. But in our country, this helping people uh, are uh, reaching out to the people at grass level, it was not a new concept. In our Sanskriti, in our culture, it has always been there. And as far as Vivekananda's view is concerned, uh, because uh, uh, one specific question that is put to me is that how Vivekananda's idea is working through mission, uh, especially in the context of CSR. Uh, uh, let me explain uh, this thing. You see, in our country, it had been a tradition that once you get what we call in usual terms, vairagya, there are some terms, Sanskrit terms we all know, so uh, I would not like to translate them. So a person who somehow get a deep sense of vairagya, he was supposed to leave the society and go out. He was expected to go in some jungle or in some cave or in some remote area and he was expected to do his spiritual practices. That was all right. And because the tradition has been going on for thousands of years, Vivekananda didn't want to break the tradition. But Vivekananda added a new dimension to this concept because he could see future also. Uh, exactly he may not have talked about CSR, but you see, what he did, he established this organization called Ramakrishna Math and Ramakrishna Mission, where young people could come 
and participate. Participate in the sense means uh, that age old tradition of Atmano Moksha, that is self emancipation or self moksha, that was kept intact. But a new mantra is given by Swami Vivekananda. With this Atmano Moksha, he added Jagad Hitayacho. That means you have to seek your salvation through helping other people. The Jagad Hitaya became an essential part of Swamiji's mantra. So you are not to uh, overlook uh, the idea of emancipation, but at the same time, you are not supposed to overlook the benefits of people because a person, any person who wants to become a monk, he wants to become a part of Ramakrishna mission. Actually, he was born in society and he has gained so much from society. So he is expected to return uh, something to society also. And that's why Vivekananda said that uh, henceforth sannyasis are not supposed to go to some remote areas. They have to live in society. They have to uh, live among all the people, but they have to work for people and at the same time they have to do their spiritual practices. So with this a unique mantra, uh, it was a turning point in history I would say where monks have been directed to live in society and then not only living in society like uh, what they call Actually, I don't like this term, but uh, in modern context, many modern people who don't know much about our tradition, they consider sannyasis as parasites only. So anyway, e even if you uh, uh, like to use that term, uh, what Swamiji said that uh, sannyasis are not used to live like parasite in society. They have to live in society they have to live for society. And that was a new dimension added to sannyasa dharma. And this is how this organization started. And right from beginning, because the motto was very clear, so uh, uh, Ramakrishna mission, uh, uh, mission uh, participated in various activities which were henceforth uh, were forbidden for uh, sannyasis. Sannyasis were not supposed to do social works. But Ramakrishna Mission, right from beginning, took part in relief and rehabilitation uh, uh, programs, uh, and then many schools and colleges, uh, uh, more especially in remote areas, and that too in the field of women education, Ramakrishna Mission did pioneering work. So this uh, educational work, medical uh, assistance to assistance to people, relief and rehabilitation program, then youth welfare activities, women empowerment, all these things Ramakrishna Mission has been doing after 1897 when Swami Vivekananda returned from America and he started Ramakrishna Mission. So we have a long history of more than 125, 130 years almost. And rather, CSR is a very new concept as compared to that. So uh, we have got a deep-rooted tradition in our organization, uh, which actually strengthened the concept of CSR also. And now you see, in the beginning when Ramakrishna Mission started all these social works, society was uh, perhaps uh, not uh, ready to accept this new idea. Even monastic organizations, apart from Ramakrishna Mission, they looked down at Ramakrishna Mission. That was the situation. But after 120, 125 years, now what we see? Now, not even a single spiritual or religious organization can think of surviving without doing some sort of social work. Uh, rather, some people to uh, some people like to take social work wearing this Gerua uh, cloth because somehow for them this Gerua cloth is an attractive thing, but uh, it should not be taken on such superficial terms. What I mean to say, when Ramakrishna Mission started its Ramakrishna Mission started its existence, that time this social aspect of Ramakrishna Mission was not well accepted by even in monastic circles. But nowadays, uh, total 180 degree change is there in the perspective of society as well as uh, 
uh, monastic organizations also. So nowadays everyone wants to do, uh, though they are inclined to do spiritual practices, but in some form or other, very traditional ashramas, very traditional organizations established by even Adi Shankaracharya, they also do some sort of social service. So this social service has gained roots and Swamiji was, I think, uh, he was pioneering. So it's not that only uh, Ramakrishna mission is following uh, the footsteps of Swami Vivekananda. Rather, the whole society is following knowingly or unknowingly, they are following the ideals set by Swami Vivekananda. Uh, uh, I will not take much time. Uh, rather, I would like to hear because uh, two other panelists, I think they are much more capable of uh, talking on this point uh, as far as this social aspect is there. Uh, I try to give this brief introduction and if in between some more insights are required, definitely I would like to share. But uh, before that, now uh, uh, I uh, uh, request Mr. Mazumdar uh, to uh, move to some other panelists. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Shamiji, for your um, uh, for your uh, thoughts that you have delivered. I definitely come to you for with projects. Basically, we want to listen that what are the projects continuing at present, how it connects that social organization NGOs with the corporate sector. Because I think our young minds they will be more interested that how we try to work with this and corporate sectors. They are basically doing many philanthropic works and that is very little highlighted in some time in newspaper but actually through this uh, such webinar or seminar talks they will get enlightened so i uh, come to uh, dr rahul bharma uh, bharma ji good evening and uh, i know this sri foundation long back and uh, you are the president of this organization of the sri foundation so I want to listen from you that uh, the CSR concept, it is in India before 2013 and post 2013, there is a change. <clears throat> before 2013, it was voluntarily, but post 2013 due to the changes in Companies Act, there was some legal uh, discretions and also the deliverables changed. So I want to listen from you the CSR concept that is it's in India, it's past, it's pre at present, and what is its future? Because during this pandemic time, CSR will work in future. It has a significant role from the corporate side. And we give some examples also that where corporate sectors are working for the future, strengthening the country's economy, basically through different foundations. So, Bharmaji, please. Thank you. Uh, a very good evening, everyone. Dr. Shivendu Mojumdar, respected Swamiji, Dr. Mandi Balapanji, ladies and gentlemen, my, my young friends who are here today and all participants in this program, a very good evening. It is indeed a great privilege to be here today to be speaking at this program on CSR organized by the Calcutta School of Business and uh, it's a great privilege indeed. Um, we just mentioned that the uh, today, the students are looking at the career of uh, CSR and the entire changes which has come in over time. And I must say that uh, during my corporate career for the last decade, I voluntarily took to come out of business and start doing goodness in the sense that, you know, there is something which uh, very special you're giving back to society. So there is a definitely a great, great career for students today uh, in the uh, corporate world also. And I think there is nothing bigger than serving humanity. And uh, I, I hope everyone does get a chance in some time in his career to serve humanity. Um, uh, the word CSR actually has been creating quite a buzz in the business circles for quite some time now. And India, as you know, is the first country to make corporate social responsibility mandatory. The business actually should not be only about money. It should also be about responsibility. It should be about responsibilities, not private greed. Today, I would also like to recall the words of, uh, words of uh, Mr. Jayadi Tata, the most significant contribution organized industry can make is by identifying itself 
with the life and problems of the people of the community. <clears throat> the term CSR, as we are saying in the past, in its early days, may have been a part of general corporate parlance, but in today's world, the nuances of the concept has evolved beyond business rhetoric and has become a crucial strategical tool for establishing relationships, basically, into a more grounded bond between business, its environment, and its various stakeholders, more especially the government and the society. That's the public uh, So CSR in India in the past, what we were talking about, the term CSR may be relatively new, but the concept and spirit of sacrifice and philanthropy dates back to the Mauryan history with numerous instances of kings, royals, and even rich segment of the society taking care of the helplessness, um, the weak, the needy. I mean, they were the major responsibilities what they thought. Philosophers like Kautalya had emphasized on ethical practices and principles while conducting business with the Kautalya Arthashastra, mentioning the importance of sharing one's earnings with the deprived section of the society. So it's been there in the past also. Religion too played a very defining role in promoting the concept and tradition of CSR in India. In Hinduism, Dharmada was a mandatory donation taken from purchase of goods while dan or sacrifice is even today considered an essential requisite of obtaining moksha or salvation. In Islam, zakat is a religious duty for the Muslims to help the needy through mandatory charitable contributions. Similarly, in Sikhism, dashant is a charitable donation, while langar, the free provision, which we see all of them all over the place today, even in the COVID times, they've been serving everybody with food is a perfect example of institutional philanthropy. Many more such traditions can be found in the other religious practices in a pluralistic society. India, therefore, has a deep-rooted culture of sharing and caring. The development of CSR in India, what we can see is that, has developed in phases, basically, in consonance with its historical development from the early Vedic period to the present day, traversing through the pre-independence and post-independence period and the post-economic liberalization of the 1990s also. While the first phase of CSR was influenced by the family, values, traditions, culture, and religion, the pre-independence CSR activities of getting up charitable foundations, educational and healthcare institutions by the pioneers of industrialization in India, like the Tata, Pilla, the Godrej, the Pajaj, who were the wealth creators. The emergence of Mahatma Gandhi during the independence movement and his concept of trusteeship for socioeconomic growth influenced the industrialists to be more involved in social reforms like rural development, education, and empowerment of women. With India established as a social welfare state post-independence, the state became a prominent actor in pushing forward policies and economic upliftment and growth of the weaker sections of the society and to subserve the common good. Public sector undertaking took a, actually a leading role in uh, Power distrib proper distribution of wealth, alternative actions through reservations for uh, scheduled castes, tribes, and also welfare activities. So what is CSR in India today? The wave of globalization which we see all over the world in the 1990s and the consequent market liberalization in India heralded a new area of, era of change. While the increased presence of large global corporations like MNCs in India, Indian businesses were exposed to highly developed regimes of CSR initiatives based on the multi-stakeholder approach. There was a shift from traditional philanthropy towards sustainable development. This is what we are coming to today. However, there still remains a tendency among many Indians, many corporates 
to simply make a substantial donation as a fulfillment of their CSR responsibilities instead of using their core competencies for the benefit of the society or in incorporating the CSR as a part of their business strategy for sustainable development. So the corporate sector needs to understand their role and potential in achieving the sustainable development goals. So the CSR Act of 2013 was implemented to facilitate the consolidation and future growth in the awareness of CSR and to build a strategic fit with the community and environment in which business in India operate today. Broadly, the objectives of the CSR Act 2013 are aligned with the national priorities of national health, education, livelihood, women empowerment, water conservation, natural resources management. And recently, due to the pandemic, you must be aware of that the government has also allowed CSR funds to be allocated for various activities related to COVID-19. So the concept of practice of CSR in India has undergone a complete transformation in its various phases of growth and development with globalization, initiating Indian corporates to the multi-stakeholder approach bought in by the global corporates and MNCs, which you have here today. So Indian companies are also venturing into competitive global markets and also required to reevaluate and redesign their CSR initiatives to fit the global trends of the multi-stakeholder approach. CSR now also needs to be integrated in, as a sustainable business strategy, a strategy that not only entails its duty to fulfill its responsibilities to all its stakeholders, employees, community, and financial stakeholders, but also requires the business to proactively adopt, demonstrate, and practice a holistic approach that dovetails its commercial objectives with an equal, equally perceptible drive for sustainable development in terms of social equity, environmental protection, and economic growth. Triple P, people, planet, and profit, is the mantra for CSR today, where people and the planet are equally, if not more important as profits. The challenge for the future, coming to what stands in front of us today, is to integrate the corporate CSR initiatives into the corporate business strategy by discerning and understanding the expectations of the general public from the corporates. Besides the general public expectations in the shape of quality goods, reasonable prices, and satisfactory after-sale services. So society at large is equally interested in corporate history and track records of environmentally sound operations, high labor standards, and strong commitment to its social responsibilities. These are practices to help build a credible image of a company that operates as an ethical, transparent, and values embedded organization. It is on its own realization of the need for a strong and strategic CSR initiative that the long-term sustainability of any organization is dependent on today. So there are several unique CSR projects in the world today. And since we are in speaking in Bengal today, so there is a very, a different kind of a new CSR approach called the Saving the Black Bengal Goat. Now imagine Bengalis and food are a marriage made in heaven. We they all love food. So the obsession for tender mutton or Kochi Pathar Mamsho has made the famous Black Bengal Goat, goat a dying species. The unique breed with high eating, flavorful meat and exotic hide is slowly vanishing away. Goat farmers butcher the animals at a premature age where the offspring of this species do not mature to their full potential. So NGOs today are actually working, an NGO called Sanjeevadi Goats, with support from IIM Calcutta Innovation Park CSR, is solving the problem of the meat industry while simultaneously uplifting the lives of the impoverished goat farmers via cost-effective preservation 
and good germplasm of black Bengal goats in a sperm bank for artificial insemination. For the, in the process, the farmers are also benefiting in this entire thing. So there are many initiatives which are coming up right now, and we have to see very a different approach completely to the entire thing. And business cannot be successful in whichever manner when the society around them fails. And goodness is only the investment that never fails. This is what I see for the future. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Varma, for your elaborative uh, discussions and very uh, comprehensive ideas of uh, past, present, and future. Before going to uh, Dr. Murali Vallavan, I am looking that among the participants, uh, Mr. Rahul Bosch, he uh, joined with our invitation. He was a global head of uh, IBM uh, Learning and Development. Uh, Mr. Bose, welcome in our session. Just uh, I know that uh, today you have AGM in your uh, ISTD meeting. Probably I am also invited for that. Can you just uh, say about uh, one, two lines or uh, your thoughts about IBM? They are doing what level of CSF? If you can just enlighten us. Bye. Thank you so much. And thank you for, uh, and my apologies for breaking the queue because I knew the three speakers were in line for their, so uh, respected Swamiji, respected uh, Mr. Varma, and all the uh, distinguished speakers and Dr. Majumdar. Uh, so firstly, a very sh a big shout out to Calcutta Business School for doing this. And I think in the days to come, this would be part of the curriculum because students or young people uh, are, you know, they are most impressionable because they are uh, not as, uh, they are still, the minds are young. So I think this is a great move by you, Professor Majumda. Coming to IBM, uh, IBM has been a century old company. Uh, so one program in which I was uh, involved is known as a corporate service corps. So people who get a uh, high rating, people who, I mean, young people, there's an age bar, or I don't think there's an age bar. So if people are very good in their appraisals, they are selected for a project and uh, it is usually a social project either in Philippines or places where people need them in Brazil. Uh, so that is something unique I thought that I'll mention. IBM India spent 101 crores in the CSR activity, which is 2% of uh, India. So the money which goes is one is uh, mostly the STEM education, which I would like to mention here that is science, technology, engineering, and maths for girl children, as well as guys, I mean, as well as people or boys. So this is something unique. And I would wish that everybody, if you can watch a movie called Hidden Figures, it's, uh, it, it, it lost out to La La Land in the Oscar. So that was partially funded by IBM. It talks of three, uh, I mean, black ladies uh, if I may use the term, and how they sort of hit the glass ceiling. So, so much for STEM education. Then we have the PTEC, which is a course for between 14 to 20 years of age, so that children immediately can be employable, which is successful in the USA for cultural reasons here. I mean, you have to get a formal education degree. In the US, if you are PTEC, they call it a PTEC, then you are done. Uh, during the COVID times, IBM did globally a lot of things. Uh, in Jadavpur Vidyapit, very close to where we are in Calcutta, there is an Atal Tinkering Lab. So this was done by the present government. So uh, it's an innovation lab. And I think they're spreading this message across. So if one is interested, there is a CSR uh, group which works out of Bangalore. So there's one, Miss, Mrs. Joita Das, whom I had worked with. But at a global level, IBM operates uh, for COVID, has Watson prescribing medicines for COVID patients, but I'm not getting into that. I just thought I'll mention three things. One is the PTEC, one is the STEM, and one is the Corporate Service Corps program, which is for a young IBMer who does very well in his work. So he or she is loaned for six weeks and uh, is sent to a place where he or she could. Now, I think because of COVID that has changed this year, but uh, those are major initiatives which we do. And I mentioned that 2% of the budget, or if not more is necessarily spent on 
education only that the eastern region needs to get more attention as it doesn't unlike the south and the west which gets most of the attention i mean talking of india so back to you professor majumdar i don't want to get into it but thank you so much for including me and uh, it was it was so nice hearing to the pacific voices of swamiji and rahul sir thank you so much that uh, with our invitation with a short notice you have joined and i know that you have some other engagement but your gesture always towards calcutta business school is so nice so i can approach very easily with a very cordial manner so thank you so much we can talk to you later again okay now we are still uh, actually waiting eagerly waiting to listen from the, dr vk murali vallavan actually he was in public sector enterprises uh, previously so uh, dr uh, murali vallavan my first question to you that what should be the ppp model that uh, private public partnership model that can govern india basically to implement these csr strategies a very good evening to all of you good evening good evening sir and first of all let me congratulate the kolkata business school for having uh, made an arrangement to discuss the most modern topic of csr because the future generation is going to engage in this area to a great extent uh, pujaniya swami ji yajna dharananda ji and also the moderator of uh, this session shri shwetu majumda and respected panelists i am very happy indeed that uh, both students are here to attend uh, this webinar on csr and sustainable development being a person engaged in academic activities and also a person who was in uh, government of india for a short period of 3 years i think that it's very important to study the background of csr or what is behind the csr concept it was in the year 1990s that sustainable development became an important notion of economic development and in the initial stages we find that this concept was not welcomed by the business community as a whole some of the people of course came forward for sustainable development but many of them sidelined the concept of sustainable development as a less important factor because the as milton friedman said business is for business and business is for making profit that was the concept but in the post 1990s or even the dawn of the 21st century we find that a realization occurred in the world of business and they believe the businessmen believe that business sustainability is a function of social peace or in other words social sustainability and also nature sustainability or sustainability of resources because without nat natural resources you see the ultimate raw material for any finished product you take the case of plastic plastic is uh, derived from the petroleum products which is a deposit made by nature on this planet so whatever be the nature of the product be synthetic or natural we have to depend upon nature for our development because nature provides the essential resources the fundamental resources that is number 1 so if the natural balance is lost if resources face depletion and the environment faces degradation no business can flourish no business can survive on this planet that is one of the fundamental things that we have to remember and being a person from kerala from the southernmost end of our great nation 
we had an ex experience for the uh, great multinational corporation that is Coca-Cola in Plachy Meda. They exploited the natural resource of groundwater to the maximum extent and there was drought, severe scarcity for uh, drinking water and the people resisted against that and ultimately they had to pack off from Kerala. So that means if social peace is not maintained, if social sustainability is not maintained, you cannot continue with the business. So environmental sustainability plus social sustainability make the background for business sustainability. Profit comes, of course. Without profit, we cannot have a provision for CSR. And every that is why 2% of the profit is set apart for uh, CSR activities. And it is, as some of the panelists indicated here, it is mandatory now. Now, the next point that we have to remember is that Honorable moderator asked me what can be the model, what would be the model of uh, sustainability as well as CSR. Yes, there can be a model, especially in India, where uh, we say that I, I said that that model should be need based model, not comfort based model or not luxury based model, because the basic the fundamental problems of the nation are to be addressed not only by public sector, not is now the most viable and feasible models that we find in the uh, development in while undertaking development projects in a country. And in this model, when we emphasize CSR along with sustainability, we should see that first importance should be given to the environmental sustainability. How is it possible? Delhi is the capital of pollution in the world. The most polluted city in the world is Delhi. And India is also, India as a whole is suffering from this pollution. And as a result, uh, so many millions of people are suffering from so many types of diseases. And water scarcity is another problem. So first give preference to the uh, availability of fresh air, pure air, then fresh water, pure water and methods and programs to cur curtail and control the pollution of water. Then make sure food, fresh food, pure food available to the people of India. This can be the order of preference and also next the education, the health, because that forms the core of human capital. Like that, a preferential order could be given in the spending of corporate social responsibility funds. And in fact, I'm very happy to share with you that the Ramakrishna mission has a tradition of spending habit in meeting this, both these environmental and social sustainability uh, pro programs, and they have undertaken and implemented it in a very fruitful manner and where I got an opportunity uh, to share some of our CSR funds with uh, uh, Maharaj, who is here for Ramakrishna Mission. And many NGOs, many organizations are now following this particular method of need-based development model based on CSR for the development of the country as a whole. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Murali Vallavan, for your explanations. And one question already came from Nilam Kumari. Nilam, are you here? Uh, Nilam is writing, good evening, sir. Uh, her question is, how does the leverage in sustainable development goes affect on climate cooperation and competition? I know that today, already United Nations in its uh, declaration of SDG, which is the extension of uh, MDG, Millennium Development Goals already given emphasis on the 17 goals. That first goal, it is there will be no poverty. Second, actually the zero hunger. Third is good uh, health and well-being. Fourth is quality education, gender equality. That we have to ensure that availability and sustainable management of water and sanitization or sanitation for all. Seventh goal is affordable uh, and clean energy. 
there is a decent work and economic growth. It is the eight industry innovation and infrastructure ninth goal. Tenth is actually the reduced inequalities. Eleventh is sustainable cities and communities. Goal twelve ensure sustainable consumption and production pattern. There is a climate action. It is Nilam your concern that what are the concerns we should take care on the 13th goal of the United Nation. Uh, that is the extension of MDG, which started in 2015, SDG. It will continue up to 2030. And 14th goal is live below water. 15th goal is live on land. And 16 is peace, justice, and if I am not wrong, uh, it is uh, strong institutions. And 17th goal is partnership, uh, for the goals, uh, what I can remember that I am just telling, but among the uh, participants, I am getting one person, Dr. Devabrata Datta. If Dr. Datta, uh, you are, uh, am I audible to you? I think you can give the answer of this question. Uh, he is a senior scientist of Bars and uh, uh, former scientist. Uh, I know uh, him. If uh, Dr. Datta, you, if you can listen, you can answer this question. And we will be happy to listen from you. Uh, yes, I am present. So can you repeat that the question once more? I just missed that there is some yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, Dr. Dutta. Question is that sustainable development goal SDGs that are already United Nations clarified, how it affect or how its importance comes to climate cooperation or climate change and its global competition today, the business world. They are amongst competitions, and you know that in Copenhagen, the last the conferences on the global uh, and environmental management, there was these issues. Of, I think already taken care. These acid rain, uh, global warming, the ozone depletion. There are different issues on climates that is affecting. So how I think her questions like that, that SDG related to climate change. I think if you can uh, relate yeah. these two. Yeah, generally, the, 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 first of all, uh, thank the organizer to uh, give me this opportunity. In fact, I am associated with the, the Calcutta Business School for many of the, the occasions. With uh, reference to those, uh, my views in this particular direction is that uh, sustainable development for any kind of uh, sectors is always related to the, the climate change. And why the climate change is uh, linked, actually, it is very common to understand that the uh, climate does not mean that the only the temperature, pressure, and humidity. Climate means that the, how the, the, our people's mind is moving with respect to the, the, the each and every day. Today's sessions cannot be the, the same in tomorrow's because that some environmental concept has changed. So my perspective into this question is that the sustainable development goal is always linked with the, the climatological conditions, including all environmental aspects by implementing some cognitive modeling in the sector. And as you know, that the cognitive task is related to the, the environmental epidemiological issues which has been taken place in all past of the systems that reference whatever I give that the Copenhagen and all these things. In uh, current situation also COVID pandemic, we have seen that the business transaction, especially that the supply chain or the complete sector is devastated because of the, the many of the, the climatological conditions like travel restrictions, then maintaining that the social distance, everything has got a human community. How human is accepting the implemented events and how we are implementing further this uh, response of those actions. So therefore, sustainability development for any kind of sector is always possible to maintain by implementing the, the human cognitions like aptitude control test, which is very, very important. And that has to be accepted or that has to be implemented by taking lot of demographical survey or the, 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 uh, what we call the, the, the secondary survey of any human 
related issues. Thank you very much for giving this opportunity. I think that the, I could clear that the hard questions that, uh, again, I'm trying to repeat that the, uh, one has to understood that the human cognitions and how human cognitive tasks can be understood or implemented to develop the, the sustainable uh, yeah. conditions for any kind of sectors. And that is why if you are related to the Swamiji's uh, aspect that the, we do that the meditation. Why that the, because it has got a link with the, the, the many kind of things, many kind of disease, many kind of many other sectors understanding that the business issues can be uh, recovered um, uh, if there is a loss by human cognitions. Thank you very much once more. Um, Dr. Sorrento. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dr. Sorrento, uh, may I? Just to supplement one more thing about yeah, this. Yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Uh, because sustainable development, uh, as has been declared, SDGs has been declared by the UN in 2015, and uh, we are uh, struggling hard to attain these objectives even in this pandemic. And there is a, yes. a short history behind this. That is, in the pre 1750s, that is before Industrial Revolution. We find that the carbon dioxide uh, has increased from the industrial revolution starting period by 145%. And uh, the, in the pre-industrial times, you see the methane has increased from, you see, increased to 250 You are not audible. Sometime I think there is a network issue probably. Uh, I will come to you again. Uh, Dr. Murali Ballavan, I think there is some technical issues. So therefore we come to, uh, to another panelist, uh, Swamiji. I come to you. Mm, doc uh, Dr. Ballavan, actually there was a network issue. That's why we couldn't listen to you last words. We come to you again. We come to you again. I come to, uh, I, I, I am asking. Okay, okay, okay. I, I, yes, yes, yes. Yes, you have explained uh, nicely. Again, we will come to another uh, question from yours. It is coming to my mind. And I am very happy to listen from you again. So, Jogodharananji, my another question that what are the projects at present you are looking after that is actually supported by the corporates, basically? Uh, thank you, Dr. Mazinder. Uh, and we are very sorry that we could not uh, listen to that uh, rejoinder by Dr. Murali Vallavan. He has raised some important topic uh, due to some technical problem. Uh, we were not able to listen to him. Uh, I hope uh, uh, within few minutes uh, that uh, problem will be over and we will get back to him. Anyway, now as far as uh, what projects we are looking after, let me clarify uh, because I am here uh, at the headquarters of Ramakrishna Mission. So we had created this CSR cell uh, just to assist our branch centers if required, and at the same time to uh, get implemented some of the projects we are uh, dealing directly here in headquarters. Uh, so. Uh, but frankly speaking, I cannot give the full picture uh, what uh, sorts of uh, uh, help you are getting because different brand centers are allowed to access uh, help uh, through CSR funds. They can uh, approach any corporate and they can get their work done. So what exactly a remote brand center in Kerala or Andhra Pradesh or in North India somewhere, what they're doing, we, we are not exactly aware of all those things. But here at headquarters, I can tell you uh, that uh, what the issues you raised about SDG, etc. Uh, one important factor I have seen uh, earlier, the scenario was that uh, we will approach corporates and uh, most of them were ready to help in whatever project we needed help. Nowadays, a change I have seen. Though still many corporates are there to ready with their CSR funds. At the same time, we have seen that nowadays some conditions are also put by 
corporates. Uh, so it's not that simply we ask money and corporates help. Sometimes they insist that particular type of programs only they will be able to help us. Uh, for example, uh, this Swachh uh, Bharat uh, Avyan, or especially in this uh, COVID pandemic. Uh, so I remember uh, when the second wave of COVID started, uh, still we were in dilemma uh, that uh, how to uh, reach out to people and what sort of help actually we can give to people. Uh, but before we could get over this dilemma, uh, some of the donors, they already insisted. And then we got a line of thought before us. So you see, Corporates also nowadays have a strong say in helping. So main fields which I see nowadays that uh, education and medical, these are two major factors where we can seek help and where we can get also help very easily. Another thing, this uh, environmental issues. So in recently in uh, our headquarters in Belumet, uh, a very renowned company helped us in establishing some solar panels. So, because they were concerned only with this clean energy factor. So, earlier we also had not given importance to that thing, I means so we had not uh, given, uh, given very uh, deep thought to it. But nowadays, because corporates have some say in uh, 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 implementing projects, so we, we also have to change our line of policy or line of thinking. And that's why uh, exactly the projects which you need to know that what type of projects we are uh, working under CSR and what are the fields where we are getting this help. I would say educational, medical and uh, environmental issues. These three are major factors uh, where corporates are ready to help very, very willingly. Uh, am I clear? Yes, yes, yes. Actually, government <clears throat> when started 2013, they try try to give them much emphasis on socially, economically, environmentally, and launching the different CSR activities to ensure its positive impact. Basically, now the corporates are asking for proper impact analysis, basically not as donation simply, but they want to measure that exactly. how it affects in social inclusion exactly. part. That means how and society... You see, uh, in this latest amendment, CSR uh, amendments, uh, which is, uh, I think, which has come into force from this uh, April, uh, I think uh, some particular, but I don't remember the figure, but uh, if more than that budget is there, then uh, the impact analysis has been made a mandatory thing. Means you have to give impact analysis. Earlier, uh, we were not doing all these things. But now, even before taking a project, we have to conduct some sort of survey. And even when the project is over, we have to give impact analysis. So these are some of the positive things uh, I, I, I think and that uh, we should have taken care of. But uh, now, as a part of a rule, uh, we have to follow. So these are some positive changes, I would say. Excellent. <clears throat> thank you. Thank you, Shamiji. Uh, I want to listen from Dr. Bhama. I know that you were you represented India in United Nations. If you can share your experience um, that you receive in United Nations representing India uh, with this uh, project show and also that uh, working on the sustainable development goals. Dr. Bharmaji, please. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Majumdar. Uh, basically, uh, we are all uh, our organization has been uh, working for uh, development of the sustainable uh, goals for quite some time now in different areas and trying to achieve uh, some kind of uh, milestone on that. And of course, we all know about the United Nations and how it's functioning and uh, the ECOSOC status, basically NGOs today from all over the world, um, they are in the... Uh, uh, ECOSOC Council, which is a uh, United Nations body, which uh, gives you, uh, uh, where you can give in your ideas and how to uh, work towards the sustainable development. In fact, um, when, my, when I reach there, of course, uh, it's a great privilege to be at the United Nations and actually making a presentation to uh, 54 states who were representing the uh, ECOSOC Council there. So one was also a little apprehensive because, it, because 
uh, every country has its own agenda. And what I found there also was something like, uh, you know, India comes in, then different countries come in, our neighboring countries came in, and there were a lot of questions being asked. You see, so I was a little concerned because you see, I they asked some questions and you know, you have to answer that. Some you have to answer by uh, in writing. So you come later on, you don't get that ECOSOC status straight away there. So that is what was happening there initially. So I was, uh, I've was i always been greatly inspired by Swami Vivekanand. And I said, no, I said, from the deep core of my heart, I've been doing sincere work in this thing and I must uh, make my presence felt there and actually speak about the uh, initiatives which we have undertaken. And uh, as I said, I was inspired by Swami Vivekanand and his speech in Chicago also. So I addressed them as brothers and sisters. And uh, I said, we are all here for a common mission and that is to serve humanity. And uh, we are not here to, uh, you know, be in competition with each other. We are here to complement each other wherever we can yeah. reach out in different parts of the world. So there is what I see the bitterness, uh, the feeling which comes in is that, you know, if you are doing work for women empowerment, there would be other organizations also. There is a little, uh, a slight edge of competition which is coming in. And that I think is... Uh, you know, uh, it's not that it matters to any foundation in that manner. But I'm saying that after all, we are all here to serve humanity. And this is something which it's not a profession, basically. It has to come from the core of the heart. And uh, that is how uh, when I convinced them and, uh, and uh, they gave the, there were questions coming in from neighboring countries, funny questions, which you normally don't ask uh, in that uh, forum where uh, in the United Nations, small, small questions like that. So finally, I was able to, by uh, this thing, I was able to answer all the questions there and uh, whatever the queries of different countries had. And uh, it was also an experience to meet uh, people from all over the world who have been working uh, for different causes and coming together here, giving their valuable, and they, they were all very passionate about it. So this was a great experience. We just talk about uh, all these things happening in the UN, but I think it's a great place for a, a learning experience for that. And I think uh, my learning was that, that uh, we have to do much, much more and remove all these politics and uh, things from everything there and serve humanity. I think this is what I feel here. Excellent, excellent, wonderful. Uh, we can mention that among the participant I am looking, uh, one researcher, we, we should encourage her. Uh, she is working on CSR as PhD work under Calcutta University, Ms. Ambarin Manza. So Ambarin, if you are present, you can deliver your question if you have. Uh, we, are, uh, we can also listen from you if you are here. And uh, I may come to now Dr. Uh, Morelli Vallavan. There are many questions are coming. Uh, uh, Dr. Vallavan, that your question now, that what are the implementation of CSR in different industry, actually how industries are taking CSR in different projects, basically in as a part of their legal compliance, because my actual interest from you to listen the legal compliances that need to be actually 2% from the, the profit that already it is measured. And it is the question uh, given from Bikash Haldar of uh, our student. He is interested to know this question from you, sir. Okay. Dr. Vallon. Uh, Am I audible now? Yeah, yeah, very much uh, audible. It is the technology that enables me to speak to you from thousands of miles away. And it is the same technology that puts me in difficulty. Okay, yeah. uh, that question is very relevant. And before that, let me say that world is now led not by mere business interest and profits. World is not now led by mere economic interest or science and technological interest, but along with that moral interest, ethical interest. That's why we say that the state of environment, the state of society, and the state of mind of the people, these three are interrelated. And if only the state of the mind of the people are right, then only the state of society and state of environment will be in balance. 
or in other words uh, we should say that the anthropocentric approach should be replaced by ecocentric approaches in development and here we see that uh, most of the companies are now turning towards corporate social responsibility or philanthropic approach in development because you see that the you might have heard of the giving pledge the giving pledge is a multi billion dollar charity activity started by bill gates and marinda gates and now so many indian uh, com companies all uh, the ceos of so many indian companies have also contributed their share why a multi million uh, company owner company's owner is now turning to charity the giving pledge is uh, has already spent thousands of crores in india for drinking water availability of drinking water making available drinking water to the poor people of this country so along with legal binding along with profit motive the charitable activities and the human mind the soft corner of human mind is also acting as a partner in business activities so this three should go together the state of mind the state of society and the state of environment that's my humble answer very good very good but another question came from you from another uh, guy simran shahu asking is there a difference between uh, protecting the, the environment and preserving the environment so environmental protection and preservation that if uh, you just is, uh, deliver see when we speak of environment we should understand that the protection of environment is not the right of human beings nature will protect itself but we can be a partner in conserving the resources and uh, whenever we see that the environment that was why I, that was what i was trying to indicate in my earlier answer because you see that now in the post industrial scenario the the dust particles in the air has increased from 240 parts per million to 400 parts per million this is because of the industries and can we avoid industries for that reason no that is why we are now speaking of green technologies in which we are incorporating eco friendly technologies for production for distribution for marketing and all business as well as industrial activities we are incorporating eco technology eco friendly friendly technology and here we find that the conservation and preservation of resources it's not a, it's that terminology is immaterial what we are exactly doing or what we should exactly do is that through industrial through agricultural activities we should not disturb the balance of nature that is it for example if air pollution occurs it will affect the quality of water it will affect the quality of soil and there is a balance for everything we say in sanskrit the panja bhutas there is a balance for air there is a balance for water for example if uh, the percentage of oxygen is now 20 21% if it if it is increased to 50% say you cannot lit a match stick in any corner of this world the whole world will be turned into ashes within minutes so there is a proportional uh, equilibrium there is a proportional balance in the elements of nature and this balance should not be disturbed if there is too much rain there will be flood if there is too short of rain there will be drought both are extremes and extremes are not uh, sustainable as to say so the sustainability the sustainable development depends essentially upon the balance of the elements of nature and human intervention has to a certain extent uh, disturb this balance and that is what we are now paying for so the state of mind there should be values here sustainability becomes a question of values spirituality religious belief and in india especially why we worship all these vayu deva jala devada bhumi devi 
Why did we say so? Because all these were elements that contributed towards the existence of not only human beings, but all the living beings on this planet. So this ultimately, this equilibrium should not be disturbed by human intervention, whether it is through industries, whether it is through agriculture or any activity. We have no right to disturb the nature, but we have every right to be in tune with nature. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You have uh, so uh, nicely elaborated your answer. I, I think uh, Simran, you are uh, convinced with the answer, I think. And many questions are in the chat box. So I don't know how many questions we can take. But uh, my uh, another, actually, I am interested uh, from Bharmaji, Dr. Bharma. Actually, uh, your foundation, Sri Foundation, they are uh, working from the last few years. I know, actually, I also attended a few programs. Uh, in the world confluence, power and uh, spirituality, the initiatives, and also the other CSR initiatives taken by your foundation. So can you just uh, enlighten us with a few uh, of your experiences or what the activities you are doing from your foundation that uh, if, you if you can explain to us, I think it will be uh, better for us to understand your, what your foundation is doing. Sure, sure. So I have a small presentation here. I think it's better that you see that there are some unique uh, kind of initiatives which we have taken. Of course, many people are doing different things, but uh, what our foundation basically is doing is serving humanity in various areas. But um, I would uh, like to emphasize in two areas which are very specific, uh, which we have worked on very hard is acid survivors. We've been working for acid victims, basically and for the world confluence of humanity, power and spirituality. So I'll just take you through quickly and focus on these two areas, which I think, so this is our vision and mission. Basically it is all to serve humanity, whatever uh, we are doing. Next, please. Yeah, we are in consultative status with the United Nations, uh, ECOSOC, uh, next. Yeah, so these are the major areas of uh, activity which we have, education and skill development, healthcare and wellness, social and economic welfare, environment sustainability. Uh, we've been recognized internationally for on many occasions. Next, please. Some skill development initiatives which we have undertaken. Next. Uh, this is a very interesting uh, project which we work for traffic women. Uh, in the Sundarbans area, the uh, Swayam Siddha project, and we have rehabilitated these uh, traffic victims here, which you can see, so that they are uh, economically self-sufficient, uh, and they are doing a tremendous job here. They are making their own house, they're doing their own work. Next. Uh, this is another important uh, mission which we have done in Bihar in rural villages, where we are empowering women to learn how to use solar charkhas and uh, with the yarn uh, which we are taking back and selling uh, we are giving employment to uh, women there in rural villages and uh, hopefully we should reach a target of 5000 women in rural villages where they are earning between 6 to 8000 rupees a month We also believe in a lot on interfaith symposium for world peace and harmony. So we've organized many such programs. Next. Uh, motivating children, uh, the underprivileged children in various schools, we are helping out there. Next. Free medical services, clinics. Uh, environment. We're doing a lot of work on environment, planting trees. Uh, this was a presentation at the United Nations headquarters. Uh, this is Acid Survivors and Women Welfare Foundation. The most heinous crime which anybody can do to any other human being is throwing acid on another human being. And we have been working here for over a decade with the Pan-India presence when nobody actually knew that uh, acid attacks were happening. In the sense, it was not even taken as a crime. So we took one of the most difficult tasks our foundation took up because nobody else would work in this area at that time. And there was a very selected, but then these selected uh, survivors also for one 
uh, survivor needs 30 to 50 lakh rupees for getting back into shape, not in the final shape, but imagine getting up in the morning and losing your identity. You cannot recognize your own self in the mirror. Uh, so next we are, uh, yeah, next. Yeah, the most heinous assault, as I was saying, of crime against women. It's a worldwide phenomenon. It's not that it's only happening in India. Next, please. Uh, if you can see here, we were the highest now, and you can see, we think that, you know, people uh, in the United Kingdom and all are more. So if you see, today the United Kingdom is the highest, Uganda and then India. Then you have all these other countries coming in. Next. This is the percentage of, of different forms of violence against women. So if you see here, this is murder, dowry, dead, acid attack. I will not go into too much of these details because these are very intense some other time maybe. So these are all the state-wise uh, how much acid attacks took place. So uh, in fact, before we took over, the Indian government had not even done a situational analysis to find out how many acid, acid attacks were in the country. So we were the first ones to do that. Next, please. Uh, we do financial assistance today to a lot of people, surgeries, free. I mean, of course, everything possible, holding their hands, right, to take them out in the journey from the trauma. Next. Vocational training, tie up with different universities, giving their uh, children education. Next. Uh, creating awareness about this. Next. So also for strict laws, I mean, it was not even a law. So, you know, so everything now, you know, there are some restrictions. I'm not saying that it's happening totally, but at least there is some awareness coming in. Next, please. So these are some of the acid survivors, which you can see, you know, trying to do some skill development, free surgery camps. Next. Uh, police uh, awareness campaigns and police stations, because even the police uh, personnel were not sensitized to this. So we have all exhibitions from eminent artists involving them in the mainstream. We've also got one of our asset survivors walking the ramp here. So this is how we have built their confidence over the years. You know, she could not even talk. She is with Shah Rukh Khan who had come here. Next. This is a very interesting story. This lady, she had lost her eyesight to, uh, two years ago and we helped her through different surgeries, get her eyesight back. We gave her skill development training in computers. We even got her a job when she got married and today she has got a child. So this is how we have for somebody to be blind completely and to come out of it all. This is the journey which we have taken. So these are all the survivors of the marathon. Faster please, uh, also. Yeah, so these are all different initiatives all over India, which we have. Next, next. Next, we did a lot of Very COVID relief work we right now. So. Yeah, so a lot of COVID relief work was uh, done here by us uh, during the recent pandemic, still going on. Next, 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 next. Uh, this is the proposed rehabilitation hub, which we would like to make the first of its kind in the country for uh, acid survivors. Next. Yeah. So we also have a lot of education institutes and all where we are providing education for uh, 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 students and, uh, you know, scholarships. Next. 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 Yeah, go through this. Yeah, just go up to the World Conference, please. This is our school, which we have in Asansol. Uh, we have over 700 students here. This is a school which we run here for underprivileged children. 700 students are giving them free education. So this is universal. This is the first of its kind of platform in the world where we thought everything, the problem lies basically is in the mind and how to get the mind in order. So that is why we first started this conference uh, Oh, in 2010, where we decided where we will get people from all over the world to come together and speak about humanity, spirituality, and power. 
And since then, we have come a very long way and it's been a great success. We've been having it in Delhi, Mumbai, Kolkata, USA, UK. So now it's tur tur turned into an international uh, kind of an event. Where we are. Next, please. We had thousand speakers from different parts of the world speaking about humanity and spirituality. We had students uh, involved here, you know, and because we feel that they should ascend from human thinking to divine understanding, which is very important because this is the age where they can actually be good human beings and understand the entire human facet of life. Next, please. Uh, we also had the um, uh, initiated this such Bharat concept, which was spirituality at work. You know, how you can inculcate spirituality at work and uh, spread it into the organization. So uh, besides having a good uh, balance in the profit, you also have a profit of goodness there. You know, you are with the correct ethics, values, righteousness. So this was a very big outcome of this. Next, please. Uh, yeah, so we have taken out a national book. So we had the president of India that time there for the conference. So we had even Abdul Kalamji. And uh, I still remember in the conference, he has said one thing very nicely, that only spirituality can eradicate corruption and not legislation, which is such a true fact today that, you know, next. So these are all the compliments which we have from different people from all over the world who have attended the okay, conference. Okay. And, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Varmaji. We will listen. Yeah. To... So this is it, basically. Yes. And all uh, initiatives are there. So basically, really? it's all for humanity, uh, making good human beings. I think uh, we you. can ar arrange a different session for the students for uh, to listen from yes, the CSR yeah, activities. Must, yes. That our students will get. Um, they will be happy, and uh, so many such activities also done from our foundation, Sikshayatan Foundation. I one day I visited uh, in our uh, city office at Lord Sina Road. I have seen that only the students, they are basically and their guardians, they are uh, contributing in different materials, different uh, for COVID relief. I was so surprised that uh, they are they are having a feeling that they are thinking actually it is totally online, but uh, they are thinking that we have to do for the humanity. So this uh, notion is there, I think. Uh, all, foundation, all foundations of their own, they are doing for the humanity. Time has already come. We are already one and a half hour. Interesting deliberations going on. We will take only two questions. Actually, I got one question from that uh, researcher of uh, CSR, Calcutta University, Ambarin Manzar, asking very intelligent question. I can put the question to Shamiji that she is asking, there is a lot of fun. Very good. But the fund is going to the right person or not? How do you choose the right person? Selection to whom, who will be the beneficiary? So how do you identify the benefit? Sometimes we have seen in when we are going for relief work, the people, they are going to relief for such places where everyone is going. But some remote places, no one is coming. So the question is identify the beneficiaries is important, I think. Uh, am I clear to Manzar, what you asked? Uh, Swamiji, please. Uh, uh, thank you very much uh, for this beautiful question. I'm thanking you. Uh, now, just a few minutes back, we heard from uh, Sri Rahulji uh, that uh, Dr. Kalam had told that only spirituality can eradicate corruption. And uh, I remember yesterday I had a session in IIT and there also the topic was the role of spirituality in students' life. So because uh, both the things what I told just now, uh, they had this spirituality word in common. Now, as far as the real beneficiaries are concerned, uh, uh, at least I can give view on behalf of our organization because our organization for all practical purposes we call them uh, we call it uh, ngo but basically uh, this is not simply an ngo uh, it is uh, a spiritual organization uh, as i told in the very beginning that swami vivekananda had given this concept of Atmano Mokshartham, Jagad Hitayacha. So when we go for serving people, when we take up any project, it is not just we have to show off, we have to give use data, their attractive data, we have to present to the people and that's why we are doing service. 
and uh, that's why uh, for us it becomes easy to identify because we are not just doing it to show off so we actually try uh, uh, using our resources using our volunteer most of the time our monks themselves go to the grassroots level and they identify who are actually needy and uh, in our tradition those volunteers those devotees those well wishers those who come in contact with us somehow they also get a spirit of uh, this service and that's why even if through them we conduct some survey we are dead sure uh, that the beneficiaries who are involved in our project they are the real beneficiaries not for name sake we have included some people or not to some people we are giving uh, monetary help or any other help uh, which are somehow related to some influential people or who just want to grab the opportunity so uh, this is not the case at least in ramakrishna mission that i can assure you uh, i can't speak on behalf of other organizations or how they approach it but because our organization is basically for our self development and if we do some sort of cheating we will be very much sure that that cheating is not going to help us in our ultimate goal which is atmano mokshartam and that's why this jagadhita apar that helping other people at we are very very careful whatever help because otherwise what will happen basically our monks many of them they are interested in doing spiritual uh, practices only but when they are asked to do such service uh, activities they take up service activities also a part of worship this is also a sort of meditation this is also a sort of prayer this is also a sort of doing any spiritual practice and that's why when we take up any project when we reach people when we try to divert the money received from corporates uh, to the needy people uh, uh, we take every bit of care that uh, it should reach to only needy people so that much i can say on behalf of ramakrishna mission through our monks or through our volunteers or through any person related with our organization when we conduct such surveys when we take some steps to reach out to people as we take into consideration that whatever resources we are getting they, they should reach to eligible people thank you thank you shami ji for your uh, explanation and also the answer i will take only one question many questions came last question came it is for uh, dr morali vallavan i think if the um, pragya devnath pragya if you can ask directly to dr morali vallavan uh, if you can, uh, am i audible to you uh, pragya are you here yes yeah yeah i can hear yes pragya for your question sir. yeah good evening everyone uh, sir good my question <laughs> it's my pleasure sir sir my question is in this context that what can be the further development or we can say the future scope of csr future scope of csr yeah there is a ample scope for development in the sense that the business world has now understood they are convinced that simply making profit is not the aim of business along with making profit we should have the responsibility we should fulfill the responsibility towards society and also towards environment because if there is no uh, proper environment you cannot derive resources out of that if there is no proper popular support you cannot run the business so both these groups that is uh, not only external sustainability but internal sustainability as well not only the environmental and community sustainability but along with that the working force inside a company they are also should they also should be very much in a satisfactory manner to fulfill their duties so in the within the company there is some sustainability about human relations and the conservation as well as uh, spending of resources outside that the natural balance the environmental balance should be there the societal balance also should be there these three put together will assure that the csr has a lion's role to play in future business okay, so pragya it is okay for you yes sir yes yes thank okay. you thank you very much so uh, we are sorry to other uh, participants many questions came in the chat box we will distribute the questions to our panelist uh, paromita choudhury written 
Trinity uh, writing which would be the uh, questions uh, from Trinity and Paramita. Paramita writing how to leverage business sector to uh, SDG, which would be considered a strong sustainability paradigm. It is from the Shimran. So many questions came, many are already taken care. So I think uh, we have already taken one hour, 40 minutes. So now the time, time has come to say our uh, formal word of thanks because it is the normal and formal, uh, it is the custom. And we have, I think everybody enjoyed a beautiful evening. Three panelists from the different three directions. Uh, actually, we have chosen three panelists, uh, Swami Jogodaranji from social and uh, perspective, social projects, social inclusion, and also the ideals and ideologies based on that uh, philosophy, which is the India's basic uh, thoughts and its reflections we are getting through social responsibilities. Dr. Rahul Varma having enriched experience and uh, he has elaborately uh, defined his association with his organization along with United Nations, his experience represented India and Dr. T. V. Marali Vallavan, uh, he has already told about the model and I have asked some uh, typical questions to him. He has answered elaborately. I think our association with this organization and our college, Calcutta Business School, it will remain permanent and we will invite all of you in our future sessions too. So I do now request our student, uh, Ms. Shumita Sharkar, what is your learning from this session today? And or obviously from all of us, please propose a vote of thanks. Shumita, please. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for giving me this opportunity. I'm really delighted. Firstly, I would like to thank all the panelists and also the eminent speakers other than the panelists who have been giving us uh, the information as well as have been enlightening us with all the thoughts about CSR. I'm very sure we were all aware about um, CSR in bits and pieces, but the kind of uh, uh, kind of knowledge which we have got today is uh, beyond expectation as well as I'm very thankful about it. I would just like to share a small um, presentation where uh, it has been like, I have just tried to note down what are the key takeaways for the day in short. Please allow me to do that. So, uh, is my screen visible? Yeah. Continue. Yeah. So, so uh, from the beginning of the session, the, uh, we have heard and we have been listening. The first and the foremost learning is that uh, for seeking salvation, we need to help others. We should never look or uh, overlook the needs of the others. This is the first learning which I take away from this session. The second is that nothing is bigger than humanity we should serve and businesses cannot earn money alone. They also have to think about humanity. Thirdly, we learned about PPP mantra in today's corporate life, which is people, planet and profit, how they work together, how emergence of global competitions, cooperations uh, has exposed the CSR initiatives. What are the challenges which the futures have in them? and how unique CSR projects are available all over the world. Thirdly, uh, we all, uh, fourthly, we also learned about how uh, IBM India has been spending their CSR and what are the various kinds of activities they have been doing during this COVID time, and also how they are appraising their own employees who are showing good performance in their working tenure. For business sustainability, we also learned that social sustainability and natural sustainability is very important. Otherwise, a business will not sustain. We also learned the model which is needed right now for us is need-based and not luxury or comfort-based. So also we have to give preferences to fresh air, food and education for sustainable development rather than on the materialistic thing. Next, we learned about sustainable development which is related to the climate change common understanding about climate that does not only count about weather, it is also in respect to environment where cognitive tasks has to be taken in an aptitude control test should be done in the sectors. Uh, we also learned how the world is led by moral and ethical interest and how the state of mind of people should be progressive and it should be praised. Uh, other than this, Other than this, 
we have been listening about various foundations who have been working for various uh, who has been uh, this root cause of csr activities and everything i am i'm very thankful to uh, sikshayatan foundation ramakrishna mission shrey foundation whatever knowledge we have gained i am very sure the the basic thing that we have learned is that humanity is to be served and it comes from human being and basic humanity and spirituality has to be there with everybody with this i would propose a vote of thanks i would like to thank all the eminent panelists who are who are present here they are all champions and leaders in their own field they have had done many things to serve the human kind so thank you everybody we would like to listen more from you and learn more from you students of management have always been very delighted and thankful to learn from such eminent person we would also like to thank sikshayatan foundation who is our who is our uh, parent comparent uh, unit and we are a part of it they have always motivated us with various projects various webinars they have introduced us to various uh, and big eminent personalities and helped us in grooming ourselves as well as learning from them i would also like to thank our moderator professor shubhendu mazundar who has not only been a moderator to us in this event but also a moderator and a mentor for i'm i'm very sure about all the students we have always been learning from you sir whether humanity spirituality csr activities or other kinds of uh, life activities you have always been inspiring us our professors and the staffs of calcutta business school for always taking our time and teaching us helping us and grooming us ms sudeshna bos uh, ms sudeshna for always encouraging us helping us in all phases of life through her actions and through her help i would also like to thank the students not only from our college from other colleges as well as the viewers who have always encouraged us to organize such webinars and it has been a pleasure to have all of you with us sir we would like to very soon meet all of you again and learn from you thank you and stay safe stay well thank you so much to meet uh, before we all leave for the night request everyone to switch on to their videos please so that we can have a good uh, snap a memory of this and mr sunil ray if you can take a few uh, you know snaps of this beautiful webinar yes please, please. open your videos all Just of you show sure, ma'am so it is our uh, sincere request to all of you all the participants students dignitaries guest and uh, it will be helpful for us to keep the memory and really thankful to all of you for joining thank you very much and yes thank you namaskar namaskar thank you thank you thank, thank you dr mazumdar so and much. thanks yes. to our no, other no. panelists as well as all the participants and thank viewers. you shami ji thank you maharaj namaste namaste Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, everyone. Okay, uh, I'm Siddharth Shankupto. I'd like to also thank all the panelists here for the valuable insights. Thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Barma. Thank you. We will thank meet you. again. Yes, of course. Thank you, everyone. Lovely to be here with you all. And also thank, thank thanks, Dr. Ramesh, as he has given a good compliment here. Congratulations! Very good seminar. the resource persons and nicely articulated by organizer thank you dr ramesh and one important thing is i want to specially congratulate rahul varma for having done such a wonderful thing and it is for the first time that here that the uh, you know asset survivors are taken care of yeah. it's a wonderful job thank you very much If yeah, yeah. To... I, i agree with dr olivan uh, i had heard a lot about shrey foundation but this is the first time uh, though not face to face but at least uh, i have seen virtually rahul varma ji hope we will meet sometime and sure uh, definitely with your blessings thank you very much sir thank, thank you. you thank you thank you shubhratri so we can take leave now yeah we can we can take leave